Did we just, that was harmony. That was organic THX. <laughs> that was amazing. That, that was real. Actually, I don't think it could ever be repeated again. I hate to be a stickler. That wasn't harmony. That was unison. Wow. Yeah. Harmony would be this. <laughs> Give me a note. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So we we unified? We unified, yeah. We were, we were in unison and it was... It was magical. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Riggle's Picks. I'm Rob Riggle. I'm Darren Leader. And uh, we are, uh, I guess, shaking off. I don't want to say, I don't want to say we are shaking off an Easter hangover. Because well, that you, would be wrong. You can say it. Did you get hammered on Easter? No, I did not. Why? But it's not that It's not that kind of holiday. I don't see it as that kind of holiday. What do you see it as? I see it as a very religious holiday uh-huh. uh, for the Christian faith where, uh, you know, uh, Jesus rose again. Okay. Well, I don't see it like that. Okay. I, I'm you, not even going to ask because I have a feeling you're going to say something very controversial and no. cause trouble. What? Why would you think that I would be troublemaking? That's your. That's what you do. That's your, By the way, I don't know if you, uh, if you are watching on YouTube... Go ahead, check out the glasses. Check out my look. Check my look. Check my riz. Or not my riz. Yeah, check out my riz no, and check no, out no, my drip. No, no, check your drip. Check my drip. Fit, fit check. Fit check my drip. No, doing it wrong again. But I, here's what I would say. The glasses, it's a fine Top Gun vibe. I like it. What's your name as a pilot? Oh. What's your pilot name? Let's go. You need to come up with something good. Thunderstick. What? That sounds kind of. It's self 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 aggrandizing. Captain Midnight. Mm, that's cooler. Yeah, yeah. Midnight Thunderstick. Hawk Rider. Hawk Rider. Yeah, but R Y D E R. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make it better. By the way, the glasses. The reason I bring it up, I got on glasses. Here's a tip of the hat to Theo Vaughn. Oh, uh, I like uh, Theo Vaughn. I like Theo. I Vaughn. don't know him personally, but I like what he says. I like him a lot. I think he's a funny, funny, funny guy, and uh, I like the way he, I like his st- I like his drip. I like his verbal drip. I like I like it all. Yeah, he's got so, a cool mullet, and he's you know what? We should ha- try to have him as a guest. We on should here. get him on the show. Is he too big? Yeah, he's he too big. Are we too small? <laughs> We're too small, Damn, Theo. <laughs> Just come down to our side. Yeah, come on, Theo. Man, you know, um, um, I would love to reach out to him. But anyway, that's why I got the glasses on. That and the full beard and the glasses. You look like you're in witness protection. No, I, I look like the guy that is coming after the guy in witness protection. No, you know who you look like? Harrison Ford in The Fugitive. That's exactly what you look like. That's not exactly what I look like. Maybe you could I, you could make a reference. G- Gary, sorry. Gary, can you get me a, uh, a Harrison Ford photo, please, and put it side by side with Riggs? It's going to be amazing. Get the one from Indiana Jones. Not the cool one. Get the cool one from Indiana Jones. The get, first get the one, awkward. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Get hey, Darren. The, yes. Just look at Rob. Uh-huh. There you go. Good job, Gary. <sighs> Nailed it. That's not accurate. It, dude, you you look like him when he was playing that doctor. He gets framed for murder, and he's got his beard. I'm telling you, you look exactly like a guy on the run. That's I, what you look like. I look like the bounty hunter that chases down the guy on the run. No, you don't. Okay. But what did you do for Easter? I, Let's start there. I found eggs, and I drank whiskey. Okay, that's not how you... Okay, I guess I, everybody can celebrate Easter how they want to. In my family, it's an eggs and whiskey day. <laughs> do you actually call it eggs and whiskey day instead yes. of Easter? Yeah, well, everybody calls it Easter. I like to do things a little differently, so it's eggs and whiskey day. Gary, do you call it Easter or eggs and whiskey day? Yeah, that'd be Easter. Yeah, see? Easter. Claire? It's just Easter. That'd yeah, be it's Easter. just Easter. See? I mean, it's unbelievable, man. Well... Then my family's been doing it wrong, and we're still we're not going to change it because why would we? Well, a lot, what comes along with Easter, generally speaking, is uh, spring break. Right. Uh, they, you know, a lot of times uh, they coordinate Easter with spring breaks. Why do you think they do that? Just because it's a big holiday, and you might as well, you know, the spring break's coming one way or the other. You might as well tag it on to. Easter. Do you drink during spring break generally, or did you when you were younger? Yes. Okay, well, hence the whiskey. Okay. 
Okay. But there's a there's Easter, the day. Right. Then there's the week. No, I get that. So you are you saying you don't drink whiskey on the Sunday, mm -hmm. but you drink the rest of the week? Because I'm confused. Yeah, we, we don't need to drill down on what I used to do. What about, what do you do now? Now? Now. Right now. Uh, I mean. Did you hide eggs? No. Did you find eggs? No. Did you drink alcohol? No. Well, what? Then what did you do to celebrate? <laughs> well, don't be don't be put out by that. Don't be bummed out. We're talking about Easter, and like I feel like you're making kind of a big deal about it. But I'm like, did you do this? Did you? No, no, no. Let me ask you this politely, Rob. Yeah. What did you do on Easter? I did a I did service uh, for my fellow man. I, I specifically I put on a karate demonstration at okay. the Oaks Mall parking lot in front of Cheesecake Factory. Yes, I didn't know that you did that on Easter. I did that on Easter to teach young people and old people. Matter of fact, anybody uh, at any age who wants to learn martial arts and specifically how to break cinder blocks, mm -hmm. um, I gave free free classes. That's my service back to my fellow man. I get that it's totally cool. Did you have a permit? Did you need one? You need a permit, turns out. From uh, the city? Yeah. Uh oh, Darren, is that your phone? Are you are, are you allowing someone to interrupt you didn't shut it down? So unprofessional. <sighs> is it your PO? Yeah, he, he I told him I was going to be here and he <laughs> do, he does that welfare check. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm sorry. For those at home who don't know what a PO is, it's a parole officer. I'm trying to turn my phone off. Gary, did you do anything special for uh, for Easter? Yeah, yeah, we did the uh, we did the egg hunt. We uh, we had the the little boy there. So. Yeah, but you got a little one, so the egg hunt is almost you know that's that you got to make that happen. Yeah, it's required. Uh, yeah. For some reason, my family has decided to change it up this year. We went to a sports bar for lunch, which was a weird move. But uh, <laughs> I, which one? I get it. Uh, it's called Mutts, actually, down in uh, the Orange County area. My parents uh, are in between houses. They uh, they just uh, okay. just finished building their new house, and the gas won't be turned on, so we couldn't go to the new house. So uh, we went to a sports bar, and then everyone came to my house for a uh, Easter egg hunt for the little boy. Oh, that's fantastic. That's cool. Why? <clears throat> my curious brain wants to know why when people say I'm between houses, that means that they're actually moving from house to house, but when they say I'm between jobs, that just means they're unemployed. I feel like you've answered your own question. Am I wrong, Gary? Sounds right to me. Yeah, I think you just answered your own question. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of traditions. Spring break, obviously, being connected to Easter, um, uh, you know, that's that's a big deal. It's, it's uh, uh, what what is the best spring break, do you well, think? Well, you know, I mean. Is it going warm? Is it going skiing? Is it mixing it up every other year? I think it, thank you. Thank you so much, because <laughs> was I not wrong? Okay. All right. Look, I, I kind of see. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, you could have been him. I, I kind of see. You look like, bro. Mm. Hey, listen, I'll take it. That's a major compliment. It's shocking how much of a fugitive you look like right now. Mm. You All do. Right. I, I appreciate it. What Even was his name? Richard something? Yeah, it was Richard. Uh, let me look it up. Thank you. Dude. Shepherd? Was it Shepherd? No. No. Right, dude, with the glasses, you look like you are hiding from someone. Well. It, it's amazing. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not on the run. I don't want to put your, I don't want to air Dr. Your... Richard Kimball. Richard Kimball. Kimball. Of course. Dude, you are, you're Rob Kimball. <laughs> Rob Richard, Kimball. Richard's twin brother? Richard Riggle and Rob Kimball. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so Ugh. you asked me what the perfect spring break is. I don't think that there is one size fits all. I think some people like the skiing. Some people like the Fort Lauderdales and the warmth. I've never gone to spring break in Florida and, and, and done the spring breaky sort of thing, which is, those are in air quotes for the yeah. listeners. Yeah. Um, it was never on my menu, um, uh, probably because I didn't ever go to college. Yeah. And have a desert like my life is one giant spring. What about break. high school though? Did you do you got breaks in high school? Spring I, breaks? Yeah, but I didn't really do much. Yeah, because you couldn't do much. And what do you do? Yeah, you don't have the funds, and you're not old enough. And you're, what are you going to do? Go for a lot of day with your family? Yeah, not cool. So you waited till your forties. I waited till my forties to continue to not do anything real <laughs> specific. 
<laughs> I thought you were going to say, no, in my 40s, I really lit it on fire. That's no, when I got after it. No, because when I, uh, the, the real deal for me is uh, spring break is, there are weekend nights, mm. spring break, St. Paddy's Day, mm -hmm. all the holidays, all the party holidays. Mm -hmm. Back when I was really tearing it up, I was partying on all the off days. Mm -hmm. So when the so it wasn't special. It was like amateur night. Yeah, all, you know, you go out on a Friday night and all everybody's working nine to five. All right, it's Friday night. We're gonna go get lit up. And I'm like, dude, I've been doing this Monday through Thursday. I'm taking tonight off. Everybody's working for the weekend. Anybody name that tune? Everybody's working for the weekend by Loverboy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, I just I like you know me. I like to break off a little taste. Trivia. Who's the Who's the singer? What's his name? Mike Reno. You're Canadian. You. That's why uh. you know. <laughs> that's why you know. Oh, yeah. Claire, you, you know, know him. You know Mike Reno. For reals. Why is he not a guest on Riggles Picks? I I have to. I'll, I'll contact him. That's awesome. That if, would be amazing. If you get Mike Reno and he's on this on this podcast and he does not wear his bandana. Yeah. We're fighting. <laughs> he I would really love does to... wear it. He yeah. still wears it. That's I want... so good. Mike, I, th that would be so cool to get Mike Reno. So I saw Loverboy in concert in Kansas City. When? And, and the Hooters opened for him. No way. It was the Hooters and Loverboy. Let me guess the year. If the Hooters opened for Loverboy, this had to be in the 90s, 80s, 80s, and it had to be 86. It was... 86 <laughs> was it it was it was i think with the beginning of 86 or the end of 85 somewhere in yeah. There. yeah wow yeah 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 where did you see him play kansas city municipal auditorium how many people you think were there 2500 probably that's that's awesome yeah yeah it was it was great i loved it because uh, the hooters had that big song and we danced like a wave of the ocean moments. yeah so that was their big hit mm -hmm. and everybody went to see that and right. i didn't know a single other song they did did they play that last I'm sure they did, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that was their encore, you know, song or whatever. Totally. Um, I saw that, and then Loverboy came on. Ah, uh, they for, tore it up. Forget about it. Dude. Slam dunk. Dude. Yeah. They, they wrote great songs. They wrote great songs, They and they performed them well. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you know Mike Reno. You know, I would say that, Loverboy is one of the most underappreciated rock bands from the 80s in the world. I would agree. I would agree. Uh, I, th I don't think they got their due. It's because they're Canadian. Yeah. they Canadian bands, there are some amazing Canadian well, artists. Well, Rush right? comes to mind. Rush. Well, yeah. Rush, Rush Triumph, mm. Loverboy, Triumph. April Wine. How did I forget about Triumph? April Wine? April Wine. I didn't know that. Soup's Canadian, dude. No yeah, way. Very Canadian. And th uh, there, there's a guy up, up in Canada. I think he's from Toronto. His name's Ian Thornley. He has a band called Thornley. And then there's he has another band called Big Wreck. Honestly, one of my top three favorite artists in the history of my music. Wow. Appreciation. Wow. Unbelievable. But for some reason, you know, the can Canada does the, the Junos. They do their, they kind of do their own thing. Mm hmm and I just think that we we have so many distractions here. We have yeah. we have Kardashians, yes. and we have HD GTV. We have all the things, and we miss a lot of the great white North artists. And I think I think Rush and Triumph, I mean, arguably are two, I, are two of the most powerful trios in rock. I saw Triumph in concert. How great were they? They were amazing. And you know who opened for them? Oh. I was I was loving because there was 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 good packages. Okay, was it one word? In the yes. Top? Okay, was uh was the American? Yes. Okay, uh, what does it start with? M. M. I think I got this right. I might be wrong, but I think I got this okay, right. Okay, what's the? Uh, I don't. Uh, I won't. And they had they had one big hit. M. One big hit yeah. in the eighties. I, I think it was probably 70s and 80s, but... 70s, 80s? Oh, man. The concert was in the 80s, but the... Right, 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 but the band sort of... Yeah, yeah. I can't... I'm, I'm blanking. Mountain, Mississippi Mount Queen. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Mississippi <laughs> Queen! Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's, a, that's some cowbell. So I have a story about Gene Simmons. Mm. Um, I was at Gene Simmons' house, and I was working... No, that humble, no humble brag, just... That's the way it is. No big whoop. Me and GS. Okay. I'm God. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to come off cool, but yeah, he had me at his pad. Okay. okay. So you're hanging with GS. I'm at hanging his with pad. I'm hanging with the Sims, and uh, no, we're just we're just kicking don't. it cold, old school style, and uh, 
at, at one point I was doing audio editing for him. And so he, he actually, I brought, I brought over my pink bubble Mac when, yeah. with the IMAX when they were bubbles. Oh God, yeah. I was in his house and, I, and he, what he had me do is he, he had me take cassettes of songs that he had written with guys like, and I'm not kidding, Bob Dylan. Wow. He wrote with Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Yeah. He wrote with all these legendary guys. And Hall would, of Famers. Hall of Famers. And he would record it on cassette, the session. And if they got a song, he would end up demoing it, and he put it on cassette. So he wanted to digitize all those all those songs. Yeah. And I, uh, wait, I totally forgot the point of my story because I I got onto another story. We're talking about Mississippi Queen. Mountain. Mississippi Queen. So he said, um, "There's a song. There's a Kiss song, and he uh, Leslie West from Mountain. Okay. So he had written with Leslie West, and he goes, and he goes, Darren, do you, do you know who that is? And I said, No, no, Gene, I don't. And he goes, that's Leslie West. And I said, oh, that's cool. He goes, do you know who we took? We took, uh, th- there's a song, uh, a Kiss song. And he goes, do you know who we took that song from? Who I ripped that off from? And he goes, I go, no. He goes, Mountain, Leslie West, ripped it off directly. And he was saying it as, 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 as a, a joke. As, no, as a, as like a, as a respect for oh. them. He's like, it's so good. I bar, and I didn't rip it off, but I borrowed. I was about to say, you better not say that. No, no, no. I, but I, you know, he was saying I borrowed a vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he was well, an influence. Imitation is the f- greatest form of flattery. It means it, that you think so highly of, of the style or whatever that you want to. It is. Try to, try to find a way to do it yourself. And let's face it, dude, there's only 12 notes. So like, and there's only so many progressions and <laughs> orders you're going to put those in that are pleasing to ears, right? Yeah. So you're going to hear things a little bit, you know, repetitively over time. And the longer we go and write more songs, the smaller the Well, I've of- sent you, I've sent you, because of social media, uh, I've sent you like some of these weird mashups mm-hmm. that are bizarre. So you, they'll take a heavy metal song and they'll put it with a Michael Jackson song and the lyrics match up with the beats and it's, it's, it's twisted in a way. Yeah. But you do realize there's it, only twelve notes, like there's there's a, o- and there's only so many like four beat combinations that work. Yeah, my my favorite one of those is Hall and Oates and Metallica. They do they do a Hall and Oates Metallica mashup. Yeah, and where I think where I think they sing uh, like a Metallica song over Hall and Oates music. Yeah, and it's it's great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was. Um, I don't know why we talked about that. Oh, we we're talking about Mountain. We we're talking about opening bands. Yeah, so I saw no. Triumph. And Mountain open for them. That's crazy. Yeah. You know who I saw open for That was Van Kemper Halen? Arena. That was Kemper Arena, Kansas City. Can- Kemper, Kemper Arena. Mm-hmm. That was at like 10,000? Oh, that much more. I think it was probably 15. Was it sold out? Yeah. See, that's when rock and roll was cool. I'm telling you, man, back in the 80s and early 90s and, and the 70s, rock and roll, like live shows was everything. You went to a lot of shows. I did. You are a music fan. I am. You're a rock fan. Oh, I I get that, but I'm from not you. one of those. I'm not like a comic book nerd, and I mean that in a nice way. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy who who memorizes things chapter and verse. I like the experience. I want to go see bands. I want to hear them. Right. I appreciate the musicianship. I appreciate, you know, the especially a good stage performance. Like I appreciate it all, but I don't sit there and go. You know, the lead singer uh, is three times divorced and has five children. And I don't I don't drill down like that. What's your favorite band of all time? Come on, man. That's not fair. I'm not here to be fair, Rob. Oh, well, that was... You serve it up cold sometimes. You sometimes know? you got to hear the truth. Okay, I mean, I'm 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 twisted on this one because I'm torn between two bands. Okay. So there's a tie. And you're just going to have to live with the tie. Okay, what are your top two favorite bands, Rob? ACDC and Journey. Wow. Okay. And that's that. Those were, those were definite logos that I used to draw on my peachy. In fourth and fifth grade, <laughs> my trapper keeper, my trapper keeper had a V H for Van Halen. Yeah, because I used to be able to draw that. Oh and yeah, everybody did. AC DC, I like drawing the the lightning bolt between the AC DC. Dude, come on, come on. I so the logos I used to draw. I used to draw Dio with the old English oh, letters. God, yeah, Dio, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Journey, AC DC, and uh, who else would I do? Um, I don't. I can't remember the other ones, but I remember there was a Journey logo, and you'd have to write it like really long and thin. You couldn't really read it yeah. unless you like turned the page <laughs> like that. These are the things, dude. That I remember. Everybody's everybody's Trapper Keeper was you. If you didn't scroll the cool bands mm-hmm. on there, somehow you were like, "What's up, dude? Is there a problem?" <laughs> I know. What's up? And I love though that you did Dio. Like, oh, dude. 
because Ronnie James Dio is so funny to me because when I was, you know, seventh and eighth grade, I was I was so intimidated, you know, because I thought this guy worships the devil. He's got swords. He's, you know, he's a he's a bad dude. The guy's five foot three, a hundred and five pounds soaking wet. Yeah. He's he's got a powerful voice. It's unbelievable. It's disproportionate to his body. With and it, and his music was great. Like a lot of, but I just love that I was so intimidated and scared by this guy. Well, dude, he's singing about wizards and rainbows. And when you're that age, you're like, yeah. dude, he's into some dark shit. I don't know about. <laughs> I don't want a spell cast on me. So I'm gonna like steer clear of RJD. But the thing about Dio- well, and then he had, I mean, come on, he had albums like Holy Diver. Oh, you know, totally. And Rainbow in the Dark. Dude, the, uh, on Holy Diver, that's there's like, a that's demon. Like Satan stuff. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so enamored by it, though. Like, I, <laughs> I was like, oh man, he's speaking to me. I really, really loved Dio. I, I didn't ever meet him. I didn't know him, but I know people who did know him. And word on the street is he was the sweetest guy. Yeah, that's. What I, I actually, I, I, I know nothing about the man, but I did hear from I've, interviews and stuff like that that he was a really nice guy. A really. That, and, you know, I, I always, I think when I was a kid, I was always freaked out because, you know, especially in the 80s, there was this big push, like, that's Satan's Satan. music. They're pushing Satan on our kids. They're pushing this, doing that. And, you know, you, you could make arguments, just like you could make arguments in, anywhere and anytime. And, uh, but then, you know, I listened to an interview with Ozzy, you know, who is, the, quote, the Prince of Darkness. Of course. The self-anointed Prince of yes. Darkness. And he was like, no, man. He, goes, uh, he, he was talking about his days with Black Sabbath, whatever, back in the late 60s. And he's like... We just went and we were trying to come up with a new genre f- for music, and and we went and watched a horror movie, and we thought, <laughs> we thought, why not make like a, a music genre that was scary? That was literally their thought process. They nailed it. Yeah, they nailed it. It wasn't like you know we we went to the woods and summoned Satan, and he gave us instructions to do this. No, right. no, it was we saw a scary movie. And we thought, well, why don't we make a scary music genre? And that was that was what they did. So I I think that. Uh, Black Sabbath should be the official band for Easter. No, 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 no. I think that would no. be so cool. No, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. Why? Don't mess with Easter. Just don't do it. Don't do it. It should have a theme. No, nope. a theme song. It has a theme. No, it I know. I know. It should have a theme band. No, it doesn't. Black need a Sabbath. Theme. It does not need a theme band. Or Iron Maiden. You know what's going on in April? Do you know what's going on? There's too many things to know. I know. There's too many things going on. Um, um, you're going on the road. I am. I'm going to be going out, and I'm going to be uh, playing some music. That's in, awesome. In April. And I'm starting a movie. You are? Yeah, I'm starting a movie. Is this? A drama. Oh, wait. Yeah, I know. You're going to flex your drama chops? <laughs> <laughs> right now, you're telling me you're going You're going to the D? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What uh, can can you tell me about it? No, no, not a thing. Okay, not a thing. Can you can you give me a little drama right now? Sure. Just just something that people can like a preview of what they can expect yeah. from Rob Riggle. Okay, ready? I'm gonna set the stage. Mm-hmm. You're a you're a you're a father. <sighs> okay. You have an eight year old daughter. Yep. Somebody just walked up to your daughter. Yep. And took her pack her bag her bag lunch. Yep. And they said, I don't give a fuck who your dad is. Mm-hmm. I'm eating the sandwich. And yeah. then they run off, and you happen to be coming around the corner, mm-hmm. and you see them with your daughter's lunch. Mm. This is incredibly specific. I know. And Did this you, happen to you? No. Okay. You run into them, and your daughter is crying. She's Tears are streaming down her face. Yeah. Daddy, daddy, he took my lunch. Okay, what's her name? Daughter's name? Virginia. <sighs> Okay. Uh, but you call her Ginny. I was about to say, I don't call her Virginia. I call no, it's her Jenny. too long and yeah. official. So Ginny mm-hmm. is crying. Mm-hmm. She's in her little Hello Kitty shirt. She's in some cool like rain boots that are red that don't fit the outfit because they like to do that. Okay. And she's just bawling. Okay. And this kid, this 13-year-old kid, yep. took your daughter's lunch, and he's going to go eat the tuna fish sandwich. Okay. Go. <clears throat> okay, so I come around the corner, like you said. Are you going to say this to the kid, no, or are you no, saying just, this to me? I'm coming around the corner, like you said. Yeah. I see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Dolly out while you zoom in, so mm-hmm. the room elongates, mm-hmm. so you can see the stress and the strain on you... my face, like, what just happened? Okay. Okay? Now, <laughs> flash, 
quick zoom, okay. smash zoom. Oh, so it's extreme close on my face. Love it. Is this the guy, Jenny? Uh, yeah, the Daddy, two. that's the guy. Thirteen years isn't long enough, boy. <laughs> Blow his head off. I can't wait to see the movie. It's gonna be good. That's it's gonna a, be good. What you just did. Yeah. Where you took that. Mm-hmm. Was brave. Well, I don't have time. I don't have time to. I appreciate it. Yeah, you saved everybody time. Yeah, and you know what? That's respect. Yeah, this movie I think is only going to be about fifteen minutes long. It sounds like it. Yeah, so yeah. Well, it'll be quick. Did you write it? Mm-hmm. Okay, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what did you think? I mean, just spellbound. Thank I, you. I just I can't. Wow. Thank you. That I mean, felt like a combo of like Scorsese and Coppola, like wrapped into uh, one giant movie burrito. Come on, you're embarrassing me now. It's, Don't be embarrassed. Uh, I feel like you should be proud. Ah, uh, you know, I it, guess I am. Thanks. Killed Thanks. it. Thank you very much. I wouldn't have gone there, mm. and I think that's a testament to your life experience, yeah. your creativity, mm. and your bravery. Thank you. Thank you. So that has nothing to do with the movie I'm doing, but that's a little taste. Uh, the, I know you can't talk about it. It's, it's trade the secrets. high drama. No, I get it, dude. And it, if I get to see you do a fraction of what I just saw, mm-hmm. I am going to bring tissues because I'm going to cry. <laughs> good. But in a good. good way. So I know that the Riggles Picks fans mm-hmm. have been just going crazy. Uh, on the gram? On the gram mm-hmm. about um, my recent trip to Antarctica. Let's talk about that because I saw And I was not I was so not going to talk about it. But yeah. well, the you... Graham is spoken and I can see the look in your eyes and and uh uh Gary and Claire have been just like, you know, tell me, tell me, please, please tell me about the trip. So, I guess I'm going to break down and I'm just going to tell you about it. <laughs> so, fire away. What are your questions? How can I help? Did you post those or did you have somebody post? I had someone had to help me. Okay. I figured that. Do you know how to post? Yes. Are you sure? I do. I just don't do it with flash and panache. Do you do it with audio in the background, like songs? I can try, but then I get all fussy because I've <laughs> I screw it up too right. many times. I'm like, I don't have a day to do this. So do you Do you have like a, a, a college kid do it for you? Uh, no. I, I have a, a girlfriend who is amazing and does a great job. With She's it. savvy with the gram? She's very savvy with the gram. Okay. Well, I'm going to say this. I saw your Antarctica trip. And Antarct- Antar- Antarctica, the bottom of the globe. How do you pronounce it? Antarctica. Antarctica? No, just Antarctica. Okay, you're saying it different. Is it Antarctica? Antarctica. This is going to go on a long time. <laughs> it's Antarctica. How do you pronounce it? How do you it, pronounce Gary? it? Antarctica. Thank you. Say it slow. I'm simply the best. I'm better than all the rest. I'm better than you, Darren, because I can say Antarctica. Antarctica. Boom. Welcome, but, welcome but to the club. There's... Welcome to the winners' club. The club. The club. Yeah, welcome to the club. Uh, this is the winners' club. <laughs> Rob, I have a question. Yes, sir. Was it cold? You know what, Gary? Thank you for that question. Yes, it was actually. It was you, very, very cold. You know what, Gary? You're skipping the foreplay, man. You're just getting right into <laughs> that's the. Kinda, that's kind of my thing. I know. Uh, <laughs> apparently, I, I don't. No, I don't want to go on a date with you because I know that we're just going to get right into it. I want to take my time, dude. I want to talk about. Going on the trip. And then I want to talk about the fact that we all saw Riggle do the cold plunge. Wow. In the coldest of cold. Mm. But so it was cold? Okay. You guys, no joke. I did the polar plunge. You can go to the gram. Mm. That's what the kids call it. Oh, I it. saw it. And you can see it. Yep. Um, it was one degree below freezing. <laughs> 31 degrees. It, was this your idea or was it an invitation? Uh, it was an invitation. Okay. So they kind of, they said, this is a, we're going to do the polar plunge. Uh-huh. Anybody in the next hour or that wants to come do this, come on down. And so I was like, we, you know, we're doing it. So we went and did it. Here's the thing. They, they tied a rope to me. Yeah. To tether because people, when they jump in that they cold of water. Shock and stu- and And they had a doctor standing by with paddles to revive in case anybody <laughs> got shocked to, to death. Dude. So it was 31 degrees. So people say, well, if it's below freezing, it should be frozen. Well, the ocean is huge. Right. And it's salt water. And so it can be. That's why icebergs are floating by. Right. But um, uh, it, it was it was one degree below freezing. And I'm telling you, when I jumped in. Wait, 
before you okay, before okay, you get okay. there because I th- I have so many th- questions. They put the thing around you mm-hmm. like we saw on the gram. Yeah. At any point during that that process, did you and not a life vest, just right. a rope around me. So a rope to to yank you back if you, yeah. they need to. Yeah. How many times did you think I don't want to do this the whole way? And what kept you going? Was it your ego? Or was it your drive to just accomplish that mission? It was it, for the gram. It was for the gram. That sucks. It's for the gram. No, it was not for the gram. It was, uh, uh, I guess, a personal uh, uh, gut check. Okay. It was, it, I get that. It was a gut check. It was, can I do this? Am I going to do this? Holy shit, I think I'm going to do this. Oh my God, I'm about to do this. And now I'm doing I'm it. I'm doing it and... I'm done doing that, and I hated that I did it, but I'm proud. <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. That seems like that. And so, by the way, I mean- Rob, I'm sorry. My yeah. question is, after they tie the rope around you, yeah. and then you walk by the gentleman with the paddles because <laughs> yes. there's a high likelihood of death, <laughs> yes. at that point, uh-huh. did you think, gut check? Yeah. I still was thinking, okay, you know, um, this is. I was just thinking, this, how painful is it going to be? I was like, on my meter- of zero to ten, how how painful is it? And I'm guessing, I'm saying it's probably going to be a, a an eight. But at the same time, you also know people have done it before you. Right. So if you back out, you're like, well, it's been done. Right. And people, and there were there was a bunch of people who'd done it before me. Mm-hmm. I saw them get out. They were alive. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, so I was like, okay, you know, it's just gonna it's just gonna suck for a little bit. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a sucky experience. And I don't like cold like that. I don't like that. But I got to tell you, like, I, I gained a whole new respect for the movie Titanic. Oh God. Because those poor people hit that water and it was just i mean maybe a couple degrees a couple so degrees warmer than what i was in. in the movie i believe kate winslet right yes she was floating on yes. some stuff rose rose uh was floating but she wasn't shivering if she, i remember she was on a she was on a, a door so it was right. like a raft right but you're still in the water you're still and she well, there's wasn't water, shivering there's water coming over but you're not immersed in it so it's just like having your hands and your belly in a puddle Dude, I know she could have shivered. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just saying if wow. when you do your dramatic, you know, thing yeah. in your movie coming up, yeah. if you don't shiver when it's cold, yeah. I'm not going to buy it. I, you're ripped from the moment. Yeah. So was the movie ruined for you? Yeah. It oh, felt like goodness. a totally fictional tale. You couldn't just suspend your disbelief for one second. No. And enjoy I could, the bigger I could picture? for everything. I could for Leo being Jack. I could for Kate being Rose. Yes, I pretended that they were other people, and I pretended that I was really viewing this thing in real life, but the shivering ruined it. Wow. Okay. You seem like... That was movie came out in 97, and you still seem like you're upset about it. It was a pretty big door for her to kick Leo off. I, I, a lot of people... That's the debate. That's the there debate. There was space for Leo. That's everybody saying, you could have saved. You could have made space. I'm just saying. So, yeah. sh- Listen, it, it ain't easy being a man. Sometimes you just got to die. Yeah, tell Billy Zane. He just stole that child and lived. Yeah. You know, he, he, was, he blew his head off later, though. Well, I mean, rightfully so. I like that actor. Billy Zane's the yeah. best. He's awesome. Yeah. So I go down, I jump in, and it felt like every neuron in my body was activated at once. All six? <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that how many there are? Uh, you know, I was... Uh, handicapping for you specifically yes. but you know i'm not sure that's his six not organic neurons but what about the electric neurons everything fired at once it felt like a thousand ice picks did you hit me at once did you when you were in there did you just go this was stupid because <laughs> that's what I, I would think i would have gone you know all the build up gut check cool 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 and then i would have gone why'd i do this darren <laughs> that's my inner monologue as i was watching the instagram video rob hit like, the water and i went this is stupid <laughs> <laughs> totally totally <laughs> I mean, I, I, I get it. I was it. warm. <laughs> I get it from a from a challenge yourself point of view, but at the same time, man, that was gnarly to watch. Yeah, but if you go to Antarctica and they give you a chance to jump in the ocean, you got to take it. It's a once in a lifetime. Dude. For the record, I was impressed, but I, I putting you. myself in your body as you hit that water, I yeah. went, "Wait, this is stupid." Yeah. yeah, that's rough. It was a it was a shot, but it's funny when you watch the video. I'm in, and I think I, I felt like I was in and out before I even got wet. Yeah, it was fast. <laughs> I tried to get out of that because I did go under. Like I, I did a good jump. We saw. 
but then when I came to the surface, I was like, I wanted to get my hand on that ladder as fast as I could Pull yourself out. and just get out of that. Do they just put a regular towel on you, like a parent to a child, or do they put a warm thing on you? No, no, they just, uh, it was a robe. So I just th- threw a robe on as soon as I got cleared. And uh, then how long after that did you take a hot shower? Uh, minutes, minutes. Yeah. I ran back up to my, my room and, and stood there, you know, in a little tiny shower with it holding my shower. <laughs> amazing but, and just soaked it up and your girlfriend kasha she she, she did, did it too, too. she I did it that. too she she's and you know that's another thing too if your lady's going you're going do you know what i mean it's not I, like she could go in and, and I, go are you doing it honey and i go no oh goodness good goodness no i was like you're damn right i'm doing it not only that i'm gonna you know showcase <laughs> i love it you know, I had to embrace it. Like, I love this. I yeah. love it. I want to do it again. I want to. I wish we could do more. Oh, that sucks. We got to go back to <laughs> land. No, I get it. I get it. You know, if your chick's doing it, if your lady's doing you it, you don't want to. You don't want to come off like a chicken. Exactly. Yeah. You can't take the chicken exit either. And and <laughs> and do you think she would have broken up with you if you didn't do it? Yeah. Oh. And I wouldn't have blamed her. Fair enough. I would not have blamed her. I would have said, "Yeah, I get it." I think I would have made funny if you didn't. But I probably wouldn't do it. Would you have broken up with me? I'll never break up with you, bro. Come on. We did a we did a bro love uh, episode. We did bromance you, for Valentine's. You can't break up with your bro because he doesn't want to get freezing. Yeah. That's a stupid reason to break up. That's right. Yeah. If he misses a tea time. Then we're having words. <laughs> we may throw fists. <laughs> but if you don't jump in cold water, dude, yeah. I got you. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's my guy. Thanks, He's bro. smart. Thanks, bro. You know what I mean? Thanks. So the trip was amazing, though, because... Uh, we went down there, and I'm, I'm shooting a documentary um, uh, with a, a, you know, a great, a great group of people. Um, we had, we had made a documentary called Plastic Earth about all the plastics in the ocean and stuff, mm-hmm. and and uh, it did very well. Um, and now we're working on another project. Uh, we're ho- we hope it's a series, but if not, it, we could turn it into a feature or whatever. But is it along the same lines? It is, but it's it's more about capturing the carbon. Um, and, uh, um, and also just, just smart, smart ways to go about this climate issue. Um, because it's become such a political football yeah. that, you know, no one even hears each other anymore, you know? Um, and I, and I see both sides. I hear both sides. Right. I, I, I'm, I like to think I'm a reasonable man. You're climate neutral. I'm, I'm climate. <laughs> You're climate fluid. I'm climate fluid. I get it. But, uh, uh, there, there are all these great things that are happening. I just want to talk about that. Yeah. As far you know, I don't want to I point get the it. finger and, and say we you know got to get rid of this and got to get rid of that because that's not real. That's okay? that's the thing that. And I also don't want to be the only country playing by the rules. Right. Because other countries, big countries with big populations, aren't playing by the rules. Right. They're, and they're... I don't want to hamstring us. Right. You know, by putting all these handicaps on us. So, but I do think there's a problem, and I think there's things that we could do to improve the carbon in the atmosphere. So anyway, you know, blah blah blah. But uh, so it's it's supposed to be reasonable and upbeat that's that's the whole objective of that's what I'm cool trying to do. but um uh, uh we were down there it was so amazing to see the wildlife because it is very un- it's a massive continent right and and the wildlife down there is it, it's still a very untouched part of the earth is obviously it, is it all snow yeah all oh uh, snow, snow and ice and the icebergs you know that's fresh water all those I- massive icebergs are fresh water sitting in salt water yeah so you can you can you can pluck it out of the ocean and, and drink certain it. ones you can and and put it in your mouth and it's like ice. They, they come off the glaciers. Yes, because what happens is all that snowfall over thousands and thousands of years that snowfall it just falls on top of it and just keeps compressing and compressing and compressing and compressing, and it turns into smushed into ice and it right. turns into ice right, and then eventually it breaks off and uh-huh. floats out into the ocean. But it's fresh water. Wow. It's fresh. So it's, yes. it's very interesting stuff. But we saw whales. We got to go out with the World Wildlife Fund uh-huh. on one of their Zodiacs because they were doing some research and they had special permission to go in certain areas. And so we got to go on their Zodiacs. And so we got up close and personal with some humpback whales, which were amazing. When you see the size and you hear the sounds they make. Oh, that's amazing. It, it's You really feel small. You feel like, oh, my God, these are amazing creatures. And then we see we see all kinds of seals, like leopard seals. They're an apex predator. Did People you, don't realize like leopard seals are no joke. They have these teeth, big ones. They're carnivores, man. And if they get a hold of you, they will drag you to the bottom. Did you see any orca killing? I, know, I didn't see anything like that. I didn't see any wildlife. Would you have liked to? I mean, I saw a video of what a leopard seal does to a penguin. 
Yeah, I've, I could, it ain't it ain't pretty. No, none of it's pretty, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating for sure. And then we saw penguins, little cute penguins, just waddling around, taking dumps everywhere they go. They bend over and they squirt it out. Just it's green penguin oh, penguin poops. It's just hot liquid, bad, and it's Funky Town, USA. How, why are you so d- detailed about that? Well, I just want everybody to know what it's like. Like you, that's the most detailed you've got in your description of your trip. <laughs> Is the penguin shitting? Yeah. yeah. By Sorry, the way, man. I, I believe it's Funky Town, Antarctica. Yes, that's what you could call is, it. Is that a is that a is that you a would county? Go, you would go ashore where there was a penguin colony, mm-hmm. and it smelled like a massive toilet, <laughs> like a Mondo Duke. A Mondo Duke. Thank you, a Mondo Duke. Mondo that's, Penguin Duke. That's what it was. Now the creatures are lovely and fun to watch and fascinating. There's all kinds of different penguins, uh, but make no mistake, they are there to to take dumps to screw and poop i mean i guess that's what a penguin do that's not a bad life no they can't fly you think they're mad of course they are by the way i think if you're a bad human you come back as as a a penguin penguin? because you you're a flightless bird who lives in a freezes their butt off right all day they just turn their back to the wind and stand there frozen and then a leopard seal comes and rips you to shreds that's a that's a horrible existence yeah. well that's what you get if you keep living the life you're living darren me i'm just saying specifically well not you you and others okay so it's not just you yeah you and gary I what did i do huh what did i do clean it up gary just clean it up man gary you're doing it again yeah don't make me get detailed just clean don't it make up. him feel a way he feels about penguin poops about you because he was, you are, you are really, you really took that in. That yeah. would be an upgrade if he felt about penguin poops like he does about me. <laughs> hey, That's not I... true. That's not true. Now, hey, by the way, so uh, the the documentary, we got some great, great footage and, and some great knowledge uh, about um, uh, wildlife, carbon, the effects of carbon, um, and uh, uh, our environment. So it it should be a fun, uh, should be a fun documentary. When do we see that? Um sooner rather than later we uh, we still have some more filming we need to do some other places we want to go copy uh, some other technologies we're discovering and learning about uh, so we're still piecing it together so uh, to be determined TBD uh, TBD okay yeah <coughs> that's you, Hollywood you, talk yeah did you flex any of your dramatic acting chops while you were in the dock yeah yeah all right I, I did the I almost verbatim I said 13 years ain't long enough and then I pumped a shotgun <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Did people wonder what you were talking about? And everybody did. Everybody you should always say that. Baffled. Yeah. 13 years ain't long enough. Yeah. And then in, <laughs> in a world where wriggle determines how much is long enough. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I might ask you to do that. You want me to do the, the movie voice? Yeah. Okay. So stand by. I'll let you know. Okay. No um, problem. Oh God. Don't do it all the time, please. Just. You got it. Oh, uh, God. <clears throat> Uh, Gary, I hope you had a, a good uh, uh, Easter. Claire, I hope you had a good Easter. It was a great Easter. Darren, I know what you did. Did you find all the eggs? Did your Did your son find all the eggs, Gary? Or are there still some in the backyard? I think he found them all, but I'm not sure. You'll know in a couple of days. What are we looking at? Nothing. Hmm. Like... Live feed of the eggs. Oh. Oh, you have a live feed of the eggs? Yeah, I want to know when he finds them all, and I'm I'm at work. So. That's f- oh no! Wait, that's terrible. What's today? <laughs> it's not- it, are there still eggs? He's five, Darren. Calm yeah. down. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna walk up to your kid. I'm gonna be like, five years ain't long enough, and I'm gonna cock the shotgun. No, no. What? No, you can't. Five years. He's five year old. He's, it takes time to find all the eggs, man. I was just trying to be dramatic. <sighs> Oh, that's dramatic. Five years ain't long enough. <laughs> um, that's cool. Well, listen, dude. Uh, uh, I always like hearing your stories about. Uh, uh, I have a story. I, I <laughs> Easter. Well, I was going to tell you a story oh. about working at Paul Stanley's house. Oh no! Uh-huh. What did you just make the rounds with Kiss? So here's my story. Okay. Uh, I met Tommy Thayer, who's the guitar player in Kiss. Love Tommy. Played golf with him wonderful yeah. human. I met him on on a golf course through <laughs> through the drummer from Rat. I'm dropping names left to right. Bobby Blotzer, 
And we played at Simi Hills. I met Tommy Thayer, and we became fast friends, golf friends. And I think that's how you met him. Yeah. Through me. Yeah. So uh, in, 2000, in, in 2001, um, there, there was an event that happened that caused people to not want to really party that much and yeah. go out and watch bands. Yes, I remember that. That it was awful. And so I had to be resourceful, and Tommy's like, hey, he was he was working with Kiss. He wasn't full time in Kiss, but he was working with them heavily. He goes, I could probably get you a job at the Kiss Warehouse. Now, if you've never been to the Kiss Warehouse, which I can't imagine why you would go there, mm-hmm. they had two warehouses. Uh, one was in Van Nuys. One was in Saugus. And I I got a job there. I was making twenty bucks an hour. Good. It was killer. That's back in the day too, right? Uh, and I would go to the warehouse and we, there would be all sorts of weird, odd jobs. Move these amps over to that corner. Yeah. And if they got ready for a tour, you'd have to prep for the tour. But I got like a behind the scenes look at all the stuff. And and being a KISS fan when I was younger, it was- They have a ton of merch. Oh, dude. And every different, like pin open, uh, like pins and bottle openers and koozies and t-shirts and, and go down the list of everything they can merchandise. I believe they have- they are the most licensed band, like for items. They've licensed their name to the most items in in popular music. Mm-hmm. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, Gene Simmons. They had a coffin, a Kiss coffin, and it was at his house. Fun fact: Gene Simmons has one of everything they've ever made in his house. I've been there to record a podcast with him. He's got about two thousand square feet on two different floors of what he calls an office, but it is just uh, plexiglass cases was all it, around the room. Was it in Benedict Canyon? Yeah. Yep. It's it's miraculous. Yep, he moved from there, which wow. is why I'm saying that. Yeah, he's in Vegas now, I think. But I was about to say, don't give away the man's. It was yeah. a dojo. Crazy. Was that at 1540? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was a crazy display of merchandise. Like, you've never seen anything like it. It was like a museum in just in his home, in one wing of his home. He, wow. And and I'll tell you, you know, when I when I first went over there, this was pretty interesting. When I first started working for Gene, we were doing the audio editing thing. That's kind of how he started with Gene. And he was having me digitize, and the Mac was only moving it so 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 quickly, right? Mm-hmm. And he was starting to get frustrated. And I didn't really know him that well. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting for it to process, and he goes, and he's telling me what he wants to do with the song editing. I want to take the beginning there. I want to turn it around. I want to t- put, take the second chorus there, put the bridge there. And I don't know the songs. I don't, mm-hmm. know, I, I don't know fucking songs, Gene. <laughs> so I'm like, and, and he goes, uh, can you make it go faster? Like, and he started, he snapped on me. And dude, I remember so clearly, I was like, all right, I've got two choices in this moment. Yeah. And I'm just going to say it. I can go down fuck you lane <laughs> or I can go down Explanation Avenue. Yeah. And I didn't go down FUL. Okay. I was like. Well, it's a mature choice. Well, I figured it wasn't going to be as productive as the other one. So I, sa- I, I stopped and I said, I, I go, Gene, the computer runs at a certain speed. <laughs> I don't know your songs, yeah. and so I'm trying to catch up to what you're telling me. I go, but and honestly, you're yelling at me. It's not making me go faster. It's making me flustered, <laughs> and I'm going slower because it's more. It's it's putting me off. Yeah. I go. So if you want to do this, you have to understand it's going to be this a, at a certain speed. And he looks at me and he goes, "Let's start over." And from then on, he was cool as a cucumber. Really? He was, he was, and I feel like it was, with his experience and his life experience of people, you know, because you meet a lot of people along the way who you just get frustrated with. Yeah. Because for for a multitude of reasons. I think he was, he put me in that category, and when he realized I wasn't going to take it, you know, in a nice way, he went, oh, I can have some respect for somebody who kind of, it it was like a it was it was so the stark difference. Well, I think you handled it in a in a mature way. I think Thank you, you. I think you uh, were respectful, but you know, at the same time you just said, "Listen." I was stern but respectful. Yeah. And then uh, the next day, Shannon Tweed made me a breakfast burrito. I also Stop. gotta say, oh, I'm not stopping. That was a really good Gene Simmons impersonation. Well, thank you, Gary. And and I have a little little feather in the cap. On his box set, there's two songs that I had written that he recorded for his box set. What? Yeah. That's cool. so cool, man. Yeah. Um, and Shannon Tweed was always super, super sweet. And She always seemed nice. When they had the reality show, mm-hmm. she always seemed like a reasonable person, and, and, and she always seemed very nice, very sweet. She was very always very sweet to me, and 
And again, I, I know nothing about her other than right. what the, you see on TV, which means nothing. Right. Yeah. But no, in my experience, and honestly, Gene, yeah. he was wonderful. Yeah. He was he was really really he was very sweet, thoughtful, funny, and he loved. He's a family guy. Like loved his kids and Shannon. And yeah. it was a it was a great experience after we got through that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And then on our next episode, I'll tell you. I'll, this is a cliffhanger. I'm going to tell you about my. Um, experience painting Paul Stanley's pirate ship in his front yard for his son's seventh birthday. Oh my God! All right, friends. Well, this has been Riggle Spicks. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna leave it right there because that's a cliffhanger. It's awesome. All right. Uh, hey, Gary, Claire, thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been Riggle's Picks. Uh, I'm Rob Riggle. Thanks for joining us. I'm Darren Leader. We appreciate it. <laughs> 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 Fow, 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 fow,